Uh, of course then, we are less than 48 hours away from the big day of Christmas Day. We know what it's like. It's all about discussions around the Christmas table, eating too much food. And then by about three, four o'clock, we're all arguing about our favorite Watford players. So we thought we would start a little bit earlier and we're gonna start to put together our greatest Watford 11 of all time. Uh, so this is what we got. This is our formation at the moment. This could change. We may go to a 4-3-3 as we work our way through. Uh, we'll see where it takes us. But each week our guest is going to pick a player to put into the side. And we're going to start uh, with the goalkeeper. You have the power to pick the greatest goalkeeper for our greatest Watford 11. So no pressure. Who feel, are you going for? I feel that for me personally, I'm picking this person because I've been around this goalkeeper myself. I've, I've known them personally. I see what they can deliver on the training ground, what, how good they are up front, and seen the career they've had and seen what they've done on the pitch. So Ben Foster is my, is, is my pick. Um, it was hard because, as, as Tommy said, Chambo could be up there. Um, there's a few other, Tony Cohen, there's all the greats that could be up there. But I feel, if you look at the modern-day goalkeeper, um, Ben's feet, his hands... His concentration, his attributes, I feel he is the, the best goalkeeper to, to have played for Watford, in my opinion. Yeah. Amazing. Well, a great start. Uh, of course, another 10 weeks of picking players to go in that side. So let us know your thoughts. Our different guests each week are going to pick a player and put them into that side. As I said, the formation may change as we start adding players into that. But uh, we're going to look to see how that one comes together over the next few weeks. We had our first entry into that starting 11, uh, which of course was the goalkeeper, Gifton Noel Williams, making the selection of Ben Foster. Today's challenge for Tommy Smith is to pick a right back. That's where we're gonna be going today on this one. So, so lots of names in yep. the mix. The pressure falls upon you to, to pick the right back. It doesn't matter if Tommy doesn't agree with you. Right, it's okay. your decision. I'm sure he won't. Um, you know, he can't argue with it. He can't overrule it. And the pressure is on you because okay. you are responsible and your name is going to go against this player as well. I'm more than um, happy with that. So make a wise choice. Um, so who, who would you like to pick for our all-time Watford greatest 11? Well, I'd like to say for, it's a tough decision. Having played with some brilliant right backs and I've been lucky enough to actually all four we've mentioned there with Nigel Gibbs, Darren Baisley, Lloyd, Adrian Mariapa, they're kind of, for me, the top of the list. I've played with all four at this club, so I've been really, really fortunate to have, to have those players on my CV that I've played with. But I think we can't look past Nigel Gibbs. Um, one man club, I think near enough he was at the club, well, gone 15 years as a player, incredible attitude, um, taught me so much when I came into the squad about commitment, how to train, how to do things cor correctly, professionalism. Um, yeah, fantastic player. I think he's got one of the most appearances for the club as well, perhaps. So, you know, you just can't look past him. Um, and I think he's rightly so the right back in, in this team. You'd beat the keeper and Gibbo would be on the line clearing it off and you think, how on earth he just read the game? Uh, you so drive so you mad at oh, the training ground where you think yeah. you've scored in a game, next goal a winner and yeah. then Gibbo's there. Yeah. Popping up on the line, the yeah. Go, go, Body. gadget leg because it's like, it, 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 he's only four foot two, yeah. Gibbo. <laughs> yeah, his leg would go all the way yeah. across the yeah. goal to clear it off the line. Amazing. I think that's a fabulous addition to our greatest 11. Then that's the player that goes in, Nigel Gibbs, uh, selected by Tommy Smith. It's been immortalised there now, Tommy, and I think a, a very worthy addition to that side. Uh, of course, your selection can be someone that you've obviously had experience playing with or someone that you saw play lots. So that's what's quite nice about this team. We're getting lots of different uh, opinions and selections on it. So uh, come on then, reveal your selection. Who would you like to pick as your greatest centre-back? Well, I played with quite a few centre-backs. Uh, Obviously, I played right back as well and left back. But, um, you know, one that probably stands out for me was Adrian Mariapa. Okay. He actually uh, knocked me out of the team at one <laughs> stage. So, uh, but we, we've always had a good relationship. You know, he's a good pal of mine. And he has the attributes that is needed to be a centre back. You know, he's, he's got a good leap. He's aggressive. He can cover ground. And he concentrates, you know, sometimes defenders fall to sleep. And uh, most of the time, I thought Eddie, Eddie Mariapa uh, was top draw. 
Well, uh, let's take a look at that side then and how it's shaping up. Uh, well, there we go. Adrian Mariapa is a selection of Lloyd Doyley. There we go. Your name is in there forever now, Lloyd, yeah. is that selection. Your name gets put alongside it. Uh, so, of course, we'll be choosing another centre-back next week. So, let's put us out of our misery. Okay. Uh, who would you like to put into the side? Uh, John McClelland. Um, he was uh, an Irish international. He went to two World Cups, um, player of the year twice. Um, he would actually fit into the modern game really, really well. Um, he was one of the ones who could read the ball, uh, read the play um, and step in, intercept, pass into midfield. He was, he was that type of player back, it, back in uh, my early days in the 80s. He was also good in the air, um, a very good organiser, his captain. And talk about reading danger and, and I learned a lot from him, you know, where, where to, uh, to be at the right time, uh, stepping in, intercepting. So a lot of the time it wasn't a tackle, it was the reading of the game, stepping up offside, working with another uh, centre half. And, and that's the reason why I put him in. He was a, he was a top, top player and he actually went on to, to win the first division, which is Premier League with Leeds United as well, but uh, an outstanding player. I see. Well, the choice has been made. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it into our lineup here. There we go. John McClellan has been picked uh, by Nigel Gibbs. Well, let's remind ourselves of the team as it stands then, because uh, Tommy, the honour is on you to pick your player for this one. Because I've taken this seriously, I've, I've spoken to two people that played with both and have worked with both, and neither one of those helped me out at all <laughs> because they both said to the exact word, it's a toss of a coin between... Wolf Rostron and Paul Robinson. So no pressure then? So no pressure. Do you want a coin? Are we going to toss a coin live on air or are you going to... I'm going to go because I've never seen Wolf Rostron play. The only Watford game of the era, his era that I seen was the FA Cup final um, and he never played in that. So because of that and because I know what the club means to Robbo and the supporters think of Robbo and on the proviso that he never mentions it while I'm stood over a putt, <laughs> I'm going to put Robbo into the team as left back. Well, there we go. You've gone and done it. Uh, forever it be on your head. Uh, Paul Robinson, selected by Tommy Moulet. Your name even goes in there, immortalised underneath, that you are responsible uh, for Robbo making the team there. But I think, as you said, a very worthy selection for that. We've picked our goalkeeper, we've got our defenders in place and we're going to be picking a right side of midfield player today. Of course, Ben Foster's our goalkeeper. We've got Gibbs, Mariapa, McClelland and Robinson, Tommy's best mate, uh, along the back four. Kenny, it's going to be your honour to pick our right side and midfield player. And who is the player that you would like to select to add to our greatest 11? Yeah, I've selected Nigel Callaghan, a player that played with, with myself um, he was slightly overshadowed at the, uh, in a very good team, as I said, I've said earlier, slightly overshadowed by, by, by Barnes and Blissett. But for, for people that would be watching Watford at that time, they would realise that he was as good and just as important to us. Um, his delivery was fantastic. He could get, you know, Tommy would have loved playing with, with, with Nigel Callaghan at his, at his peak because you knew that ball was coming in the box and it was coming in with pace. He had a fantastic set set piece delivery and got some key goals. And and the three or four years he you know he had at Watford where he was really at his peak, he he was an excellent wide right player. And um, in terms of goals and assists, his early crossing was was as good as anybody in the country. Yeah, another another great selection to add to that team. Another notable name that gets added to the Watford greatest eleven there, Nigel Callaghan. And and uh, Micah, for you, you're going to be picking our first central midfielder. Uh, now, before we go to you for your suggestions, um, Tommy, it's only fair we give a notable mention to our guest this evening because Micah could well feature in this. He can't pick himself, so he won't feature this week, but definitely someone to be considered. Absolutely, yeah. It, it, very difficult for him to, to pick himself. You give me enough stick for picking Robbo at left back <laughs> just because we play golf together. So, pick no, his I, I think from, from Micah's point of view, I have to say the relationship that, that he had with Richard Johnson in that that uh, that era was was pivotal in two promotions on the back. Pressure's on now. For you, who are you picking to go into our Watford Greatest Eleven? Decore. Nice. Just say hello, Jono. Like I said, you just say hello, Decore. Decore is someone that, like I said, I like midfielders that can do both sides of the job. I like midfielders that do midfield stuff. I like midfielders that can try and get hold of a game and not be bypassed. And I thought he was, he was while he was with us, he'd he done very well. I did, I thought he'd done really, really well. If we got into the box, in both boxes, Decent on the ball, good athletic, um, creative at times. So I liked him, I liked him a lot. Um, yeah, just slightly ahead of Jono 
unfortunately, mm. just slightly ahead of Jono because Jono would have been my number one midfielder in there. He certainly is. Well, uh, let's take another look at it then. There is Abdullah Lecore is in there, selected by you. Micah Hyde, your name is in there. And uh, we'll be picking the final four players over the coming weeks as well. And we'll see how that team lines up come the end of the season. Let's look at the team uh, as it currently stands. This is who we've got in there so far. Uh, and the good news is when you select a player in there as well, uh, your name goes alongside it. So make it a good one. Uh, so we're looking for a midfielder. Some great contenders in there. Um, the pressure now falls upon you. Who are you going for? I... I'm going to go for a different name okay. to those, and I'm going to go for Tom Cleverley. Nice. And what is it about Tom that, for you, makes him stand out to go in there? I think, particularly the first season when he was here, you know, we, we saw a player who, who, to be honest, he's the one that lifted, lifted us as a team. Initially, when he came in, he set extremely high standards with the way that he played, with his energy, you know, for someone who came on, who was just on loan to be the driving force for a team is quite unique. But, you know, he was very young as well, you know, and he was still learning his game. And obviously seeing when he's come back as well, the, the amount of quality he has, the goals that he scored, and just being that energy, having all of those different attributes, as we said. Yeah, I think he ticks every box for, for everything that we've discussed as a central midfielder. You know, I, I seen him, I used to do the commentary when he came here on loan originally after I'd retired. Mm -hmm. Um, and seeing him and thought, this, this guy's going to have some career if he yeah. just gets his head down and works as hard as he did then when he was on the initial loan. And he did. I worked with him at Aston Villa, so I know his character. And then I've seen him over the last two years. I've watched every game. You know, when he's been in the team, there's more of a drive to the middle of the pitch. You know, the supporters sometimes just think he's, he's all energy and, uh, and he'll try and get forward as much as he can and he'll do this and he'll run there. And he'll... But he leads. He leads by example on the field and off the field and for me that's why you know I'd, I'd put him in the league with with Micah and Jono. Well there we go your selection is complete let's put it into the table let's see what it looks like there we go Tom Cleverley selected by Marvin Sordell. Let's continue the uh, recruitment theme then because we are currently putting together our Watford greatest 11 uh, we've got quite a few players in the mix already this, uh, and we're going to be picking a left side of midfield player today some good contenders there but if you can now do the honours and reveal your winner. Well, there's only one when you, you know when you, you've played with a player like this, uh, John Barnes. Um, I don't think that'll be a surprise to um, to many Watford fans. Um, not just a great, but oh, I knew you'd have to put that one in. <laughs> it's not, that's not you in goal, there, is it, T? That was the quarter final, yeah. <laughs> uh, just, just helping Watford on the way to Wembley. Um, <laughs> no, but with, with John, he was such a great. He's just such a great bloke off the off the pitch um but he was he was um not just a great player um he could do anything if you if you put a snooker cue in his hand he'd, he'd you know he'd, he'd just he'd, he'd, he'd have a hundred before you knew it you know what i mean he'd, he'd have a hundred break um cricket bat you know he'd open the batting and you couldn't get him out um you know long distance running He'd win the long distance running when we did a lot of running at, uh, under Graham uh, when I was there. He'd win all the long distance running, the 10, 13 milers. And then the sprinting, nobody could, he, he used to win the sprints. He was just a all round great sportsman, great footballer and a, and a really great person. Well, there we go. Let's put, uh, put him into the side. There we go. John, John Barnes is in it. Your name goes next to it, Tony. You've, you've made the selection, so uh, maybe you're not in goal, but your still, name, name still makes the team sheet, though. It's obviously uh, a tough task trying to pick a striker for a greatest 11. It is. It's very tough. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be a, a season ticket holder for over 25 years, so I've seen a few strikers give it a go. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't an easy job at all. Unfortunately, there is only one spot you get to pick, though. Um, and who have you chosen? I've gone for Troy. Um, I just think for what he offers on the pitch as well as what he, he's done off the pitch for Watford, the longevity as well. There's not many players that, that are at a club for that length of time and you know he overcame some some bad moments in his life to, to go on and do this for us and again he was a huge part. I've gone for players that have played big parts in big moments in Tommy and Igalo but you know Troy again that promotion season 
he was unbelievable and then into the Premier League he probably got written off by one or two people um, but he stuck at it and you know he was the voice on the pitch and off it and uh, I don't think Watford would be where they are or have the history recent history they've had without him being a big part of that so mm. yeah for everything that he's achieved for all of the ups and downs uh, and to keep scoring the goals against you know when Watford are not that team that's challenging for the top of the divisions bar being in the championship I think it's it, it, his stats and everything else he's done for the football club certainly uh, he deserves that place in the team and I think since he hasn't been here or the spells where he was injured I think that's when you realise what he was for the team um, I think we took him for granted maybe at times the goals he scored and the presence he had on the pitch as well. I know a lot of gets said about his presence off the pitch, but I think his presence on the pitch, the amount of games where you could visibly see him lifting his teammates, um, I think is huge and perhaps went undervalued at times. But yeah, for me, I think he's got to be in that in that 11. You get the final choice in our greatest 11 today. Uh, so let's have a look at it and see where we are so far. We've just got one spot left to fill, which is our final striker. Uh, some great names in there as well. And of course, uh, some great players have also have made their selection uh, for our team as well. Put us out of our misery. Who's your final selection for our team in the greatest 11? Well, I think everybody would agree with me on this. It's uh, the, the one man to, to fill that last position is Luther. Nice. Um, so, you know, again, in them early down, I mean, he was just incredible, incredible, uh, incredible player. Just so worked so hard for the team, which you had to do under Graham Taylor, you know, and, and just, I mean, you look at him now, against Manchester United, you know, fantastic and just just an absolute, uh, you know, you look at it what, three three times he's been at the club, went went away, came back, went away, came back, went away, came back again and then ended up on the coaching staff and everything else. But just, yeah, I mean, I think all the fans would probably agree with me on this one, that Luther thoroughly deserves to be in that in that 11 for sure. Absolutely incredible. You look at his yeah. look at his stats throughout all of those phases in his career, ports, and you you know it's a, we can all do it once we're finished. We can look at the stats because you don't get you yeah. don't doesn't cross your mind while you're playing. But when you look back, certainly at Luther's stats, they're, they're unbelievable on paper. The achievements that he that he had at the club, and like you say, went on as our coach when when we got promoted to the Premier League. You just look yeah. at the, the the goals that he scored. It's incredible amount of goals for the club. Yeah, an absolute legend. Well, let's put him into the team then. This is it. Um, our final player in there. Luther Blissett, selected by Gary Porter in there as well. Your name gets to go in that side as well, Gary. Um, what a lineup that is, Tommy. Yeah, it's a good it's a good side, isn't it? It's not certainly wouldn't be relegated out of the Premier League, that team, would it? <laughs> no, there's some there's some top top players and, and like Port said about most of them, um, really good blokes. And I think to get uh when you when you your own teammates over the years select you as in those sorts of teams and you get those awards, that's when it means the most because, you know, your teammates, you're with them an awful lot. People just think it's match days, but it's not. It's four, five, six days a week. So I think, yeah, you're looking at that team, it ain't bad. Ain't bad at all. Um, Gary, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much as well for picking Luther as our final player. My pleasure.